So if we classify the different types of faults, and uh, today we're going to classify them just like you would in, in geology class, basically with pictures. In a few weeks, we're going to classify them associated with their applied stresses, uh, such or the applied stresses such that the type of faulting that those types of stresses would accommodate, and that's called Anderson classification. We'll, we'll talk about that in a few weeks. But today, we're just basically classifying them as a geologist would, kind of graphically with respect to uh, the way that the hanging wall moves with respect to the foot wall. Okay? So any fault uh, has a hanging wall and a foot wall. In the way I always remember, it's kind of two ways. The foot wall is the one that has a, an acute angle with respect to the fault. So remember what an acute angle is, right? It's an angle less than 90 degrees. So the foot wall always has an acute angle with respect to the fault. Additionally, it's the one that kind of looks like a foot, right? You, you, maybe if you're real creative or you're seven, like my son, you, you draw a stick figure that has a shoe like this, right? Foot wall. So the foot wall is the seven-year-old shoe. So then uh, th the hanging wall is the other one. <laughs> so just identify the foot wall, and the hanging wall is the other one. And what I like to do is I, I, I like to imagine that uh, this, these two, you know, this picture is floating in space. Right? And if it's floating in space and I fix the foot wall, so I grab a hold of the foot wall so that it's no longer floating in space, and then I apply gravity. Apply gravity. Which way, which, which way would the hanging wall move in this, in this picture? If it's fixed to the foot wall and applied gravity, the hanging wall will move down, right? Or in other words, it will move in the direction normal to gravity. Gravity is normally down into the earth. So that's how I remember what a normal fault is. So then I, I do the same thought exercise with respect to the foot wall. Uh, I mean, with respect for a reverse fault. I fix the foot wall. And this time I apply gravity, but in the reverse direction. Right? So if I were to reverse gravity, then the foot wall moves in the direction of reverse gravity. Right? So that's how I remember. Normal fault. Foot wall, uh, I'm sorry, let me be, I think I misspoke there. Let me be very clear. The hanging wall, I think I said foot wall. The hanging wall moves in the direction reverse to gravity. So normal fault, the hanging wall moves normal to gravity. Reverse fault, reverse gravity. Yeah? Uh, n no, I mean, in this case, you just assume that they're in, in contact. I mean, this is just a, just a, an idealized way to picture these faults. Again, in, in other, again, like I said, in, in, in reality, there's no, they're never anything that's completely normal, completely reversed. They're, they're all going to have some shearing associated with them as well. So, but this is just a, just a, sort of a idealized way to, to classify the fault. Okay. So then obviously strike slip fault is when you know it, it, it's the type of motion that would be accommodated in a transform plate boundary where the two faults are sliding past one another. Okay. And again 
again, in reality, nothing is that simple. It's much more complicated. You'll almost always have some combination of both normal in strike slip or reverse in strike slip. 